And he goes, yeah. oh, you're Wheel Kinetics? Yeah. Oh, I sent all kinds of people over to you, but I never knew how to say your name or where to send them. And I love the new name. That's so much easier. I think it was back in 2019, right, yeah. that you and I worked together on rebranding what was then called Wheel Kinetics is now called Crosscut. And of course, the, you know, the renaming of it was was part of that process. I find that a lot of times, you know, you know, people get stuck with brand names that maybe they're not, you know, entirely satisfied with or happy with or proud of. And um, they might have other problems too, you know, SEO problems or problems of just kind of uh, being intelligible to people or, or being easy to spell or pronounce or what have you, right? There's a, you know, not maybe not a hundred reasons that a name might be bad, but it's definitely up there. Um, first and foremost, what was the general process like and was there anything... I guess, unexpected or, or anything that you learned that you didn't expect to... In the rebrand learn? process? Yeah, that's right. In the rebrand process. I, I was really stunned at how difficult it was um, to select another name. Uh, especially because I, I think of myself as, as open-minded and, and ready to go with the flow. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if you changed a lot of your procedure based on, you know, how stuck in the mud we got, uh, <laughs> which, you know, I, I blame a lot on on me. Um, but that was a really, really surprising. And, and you know, you kept giving the, the salient advice that, you know, whatever name we select is better than what you have now. And we really can't let, you know, perfection be the enemy of good. And if you look at businesses, and I think this is where business owners really get wrapped around, here's another pun, wrapped around the axle, uh, <laughs> and I certainly did, um, was you, the business name, in some sense, is one of the least important parts. And you know, if you just look at other business names out there that are terrible, and they're killing it, <laughs> and right. it's not... It, it's not so much about the name. And we always think it's about the name. It's really not about the name. You know, um, I sold, so uh, as John knows for our listeners, I had this really uh, nice uh, Nissan GTR a couple of months ago. Um, you know, 1500 horsepower is my race car. Um, and I just wasn't driving enough. It just sat in the garage. It was a giant garage queen. So I sold it. And I sold it to a guy um, who's a car dealer um, from Phoenix. And he owned this place called Phoenix Legit Motors, Motorsports. And they're killing it. I can't believe how well they're doing. They're just absolutely crushing it. And in my opinion, he has the worst name I have ever heard. Uh, Phoenix Legit Motorsports. I couldn't come up with a worse name if I tried. And, and he's crushing it. And it was just an example of, you know, that I really let myself, I think, get hung up on the process of naming um, for some kind of weird perfection um, when you just have to, you know, figure out something good as we went through, figure out something that people can spell, people that something, you know, that it doesn't have hidden meaning. Um, that was the problem with wheel kinetics. Everyone looked at me and went, huh, what? How do you spell that? What does that mean? Uh, and so no one got it. It was insider meaning because it's a nerd term, um, you know, describing the, it's a physics word for motion. And nobody could spell it. No one could spell it. And so everybody would remember my company as wheel something. And they just hack some Google search in and hope that they ended up there. Um, so, so long as it's memorable and it's easy to spell and to the point, you've got your name, go with it and, and roll. Um, so, so yeah, that was surprising to me. Well said. I, I don't think I could have put it better if, even if I tried. So yeah, I, I think a lot of the time, what, what I see is business owners kind of treating the name of their business, the way that they would treat, you know, the like naming their their child or something like that, right? Your your unborn child, and you're trying to, you know, figure out, oh well, should we name him John or should we name him Dennis or or Felix or or what have you? And it's this nerve wracking decision because that name is going to be stuck with him for for the rest of his life and to some extent i think is is probably going to like shape his 
his personality, you know, just hearing um, a, a certain name all the time, I, I think uh, sort of does probably something to your <laughs> to your brain. Um, but yeah, it's really not as big of a deal as that when it comes to your business, because as you know, now you, you can always change it if if you do run into issues right um and if you do wisen up after after a while um but also as, as like you said as long as it doesn't have any major problems your name is probably going to serve you just fine right and i think that is especially true if you've got like a brick and mortar business or or one where you know, the, the branding of it maybe isn't quite as important, right? Like you mentioned, uh, legit motorsports, which actually, you know, maybe isn't a terrible name. Um, it's kind of goofy, right? But uh, you could certainly uh, you could certainly think of worse, like wheel kinetics. Well, so to go back to your earlier point, the, the name you should pick is Dennis, just for the record. <laughs> um, but for, you're right. You're right on a, on a technical branding point, you know, that actually Phoenix Legit Motorsports satisfies our, our issues of being memorable. Um, it satisfies the, uh, you know, easy to spell, easy to say. Um, where I'm saying that it's, it's a poor name is I, I always feel like, you know, anytime you say what you are, that's what you're not. And mm -hmm. so when you have to tell people you are Phoenix Legit, um, first off, it's such slang that, you know, when I picture when I walk into Phoenix Legit Motorsports, who's going to be standing there? Um, it isn't exactly the people I want to do business with. Right. Uh, so it's got some bad connotations there. You know, we're saying we're legit, you know, hint, hint, you're not. Um, you know, like if you want to say I, I'm, I'm trustworthy cars, well, you're not trustworthy. Um, so, so that's where I, I kind of bash it. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it hasn't slowed them down a bit. I mean, maybe it has, maybe it's not optimal. And, and had they picked a different name, they'd be killing it even more. But um, mm. clearly, they're all eating over there. Um, so it, it hasn't hampered their their progress to any measurable degree. Right. After we had finally you know, settled on, on Crosscut, did you run into any problems? Or was there a lot of like customer confusion around it? Because that's something that... I think a lot of business owners get tripped up on and you know that's i i think the biggest stumbling block that prevents people from actually going through with a you know rename or like a proper rebrand right yeah there there certainly was um you know it's it's never you know it's not smooth smooth sailing um but i think people or business owners especially think that it's going to be this insurmountable um, mountain and it's not you know you set up your uh your redirects you know through google um you know well, through your um your dns provider um so that when people type in your old website name they end up at your new website and what i did uh was actually i put in a uh little query parameter into my redirect so when people end up at my new site um the query parameter triggers that it came from the old site and then they see a banner that says wheel kinetics is now crosscut and then I link to the blog article explaining our whole uh, rebrand and why we did it. So when my old customers come through, or if they're finding you know old Google results or whatever, then they can you know come up to speed on you know the rebrand. And then if they're curious why we rebranded, you know we wrote a blog on it, or I wrote a blog on it that's been tremendously well received. People have really enjoyed the behind the scenes process, and I've gotten a ton of uh, really positive comments about that. Um, there's some customers that are confused. You know why did you do that? Um, you know I like the old name. And everybody's got an opinion, especially when it comes to, you know, what your name is. But interestingly, nobody has an opinion on the things that actually matter. You know, what is your brand tone? What is your, uh, your visual layout? What is, you know, what are the things that communicate your values? What are your values? Nobody will tell you anything about those because it goes right over their head. They just want to stick on the name. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's when you say, you know, that, that really when people raise, you know, their minor objections to your name change, it's not that big of a deal. They just, they like familiarity. People like familiarity. And when you change it up on them, sometimes they get a little resistant. Um, but at the same time, you're also going to hear a bunch of good things. Um, actually, one of my first, um, uh, right after I rebranded, I spoke to a uh, uh, 
guy who makes uh, uh, merchandise, Woo. Uh, a merchandise guy uh, locally. And he said, okay, yeah, cross cut. And he's taking my stuff down. And uh, finally it came up that we were wheel kinetics. And he goes, mm. oh, you're wheel kinetics? Yeah. Oh, I sent all kinds of people over to you, but I never knew how to say your name or where to send them. And I love the new name. That's so much easier. <laughs> so there you go. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll also be completely validated, uh, you know, by, by others. Um, I think if, if we were to get into what's actually been difficult, the difficult part um, has been the, the legal part. And, and that's me as an attorney. Um, I actually, I take that back. It's not the legal part. It's the procedural part with your business partners. Um, so for instance, I had to go file with the Arizona Motor Vehicle Department and tell them that we're the same corporate entity. So corporate wise, we're still wheel kinetics, but I set up a DBA with the Secretary of State and then I had to file that with the um, DMV. So they took it and, and that's fine. But then somehow the auction companies are running some sort of database in the background. And then they come up and then they find it's Crosscut, even though I didn't tell them to put the titles in Crosscut's name. So mm. then Crosscut's written on our titles and then we take the titles in, but then Motor Vehicles hasn't updated it on their end to the providers here to say Crosscut. And so it, it kind of got into a mess that we're still dealing with and trying to sort the titles uh, with DMV and make everything um, easy and, and streamlined. So. I think a lot of times if you've got, uh, you know, those sorts of issues, banking issues, um, that is where the, mul the, the bulk of your time is actually going to be spent.